Uh, good morning, uh, Tanse. Hello in Cree. Uh, I am Tyson Pilpew. I am the uh, manager of Indigenous Relations at Ovintiv, and I'm also a proud member of the Métis Nation of Alberta. I would like to acknowledge that we are gathered today on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh nations and guests, and thank you for having us. I'd also like to thank the chiefs, councillors, elders, community members that are in attendance, as well as government officials. It's an honour to be here today, and Vintiv is proud to sponsor what is bound to be an amazing conversation of redefining collaborative development in Treaty 8 territory with Chief Trevor McAdahey, Councillor Star Akko from Doig River First Nation, Kevin Ames from Ujo Developments. Doig River First Nation and Ovintiv share a long-standing relationship. Respectful, and I'm lucky to consider many community members as friends. Ovintiv is one of the oldest and largest oil and gas producers in North America. Today, our operations are focused in the Montney in BC and Alberta, and the Permian and Anadarko basins in the United States. We are the largest operator in BC, responsible for about 20% of the province's natural gas production from the heart of Treaty 8 territory in and around Dawson Creek. We are committed to working with Indigenous communities to identify interests and concerns relating to our development and potential impacts to Indigenous rights and to advance economic development and investments that support healthy, resilient communities. Our approach supports strong relationships and respects, reflects our commitment to reconciliation, positively impacting our operations and the prosperity of communities in which we operate. I'm very pleased to announce, introduce our moderator, Lorreen White, a principal consultant at Arbitus Consulting based out of Vancouver. Lorreen is a social performance professional with over 25 years experience as an executive, senior practitioner, project manager, and strategist. Working primarily with First Nations and in transportation and natural resource sector, Lorreen specializes in land and resource management, stakeholder and indigenous engagement, consultation and community economic development, as well as in permitting, environmental assessment, and regulatory strategy. Lorene serves on the board of Catalyst Plus, where she chairs the Indigenous Northern Services Board Committee and on the Indigenous Affairs Committee of the Prospectors and Developers Association and was founder of the chair on the BC Aboriginal Mining Training Association. Lorene holds a Master's of Art in Public Policy from the University of Calgary and a Graduate Certificate in Corporate Responsibility from the Carroll School of uh, Management, Boston College. Thank you and please enjoy this session. Uh, we'll have a, a video right now coming up. Hey, this is the famous Doig River First Nation Day where all the school kids come to experience the culture of the beaver people. We have uh, been doing this since uh, in the mid-70s. It started out small and then today it's uh, getting big, so it's good for the young people. When they come here, they get to have that, the, the smell and the sight and all the noise, the languages, yeah, it's just so beautiful. And Kajin, yeah, Trappers, Hudson Bay, started with a buyer from way, way back. You have to skin it, flush it out really good here, and uh, this boy's doing good so far. This is uh, ar archaeologists. They are, they're digging for artifacts. 
say Kanatan as they call it. It's that collaboration of community coming together, everybody doing their part to create this a beautiful, safe event for kids to play. It's a big playground, basically. <laughs> Moose me direct. First you have to get a moose. You turn it around here till it's dry, really good. And then you put it away. My favorite moment, of course, is having Elder May Assassin come up there with her traditional outfit and looking divine. And, you know, she's just a uh, pillar of the community. So she comes up and does her thing and everybody follows. And yeah, that was the best part. It makes me feel good. It's uh, <clears throat> it's it's part of tough out there. Trials and tribulation, griefs. Uh, but to get together here like this at the end of the day, then it makes you feel good. Thank you. Um, so this uh, video was actually um, Doig Day, which annually um, the community of Doig River First Nation invites school children um, from the Fort St. John area uh, to come and learn and have fun. And it's become so popular over the years that um, I think you're going to have to find a bigger venue at some point. <laughs> So I would like to introduce our panel. Um, so on your far left is Chief Trevor McCadahay. Um, beside him is Star Ako, who is on Council of Doig River First Nation. And then Kevin Eames, who is the operations, Chief Operations Op Officer of Ujo Developments LP, which is a Doig-owned business. So I would like to also acknowledge that we today are on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations with appreciation. Um, so Chief, I wonder if you could maybe just give a little bit of an overview of Doig River First Nation and um, a bit maybe of a timeline um, and, and where we are now. Good morning, everybody. Can you all hear me back there? Oh, I guess now. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a timeline. Um, Doig River First Nation has, uh, has chosen me to be Chief, Chief Trevor McCadahy for the last eight years. And uh, a little bit of overview, we've, we've, we're about 65 kilometers north of uh, Fort St. John, and uh, it's a rural, rural area. And, uh, you know, we, we really, engage with the surrounding local locals and uh, there's a lot of settlers in the area and their families from the past so you know we've always had a, a challenge with uh, racism and ba about 35 years ago we decided to battle that by showing the fourth graders from the school district a little bit about our culture and you know why we do what we do, who we are, why we're so connected to the land and our passion for, you know, land protection and, and other things. And uh, our real main focus over the last decade's been finding that balance between the environment and industry. There's many industries there from oil and gas to logging, mining, you name it, uh, it's happening there. And uh, of course, one of the uh, the most significant LNG plays in uh, Northeast BC, and we're right in the heart of it, the Motney play. And Motney is actually a, a former chief, and it's a, it's a formation that, that oil and gas 
um, industry calls Motney, but it's actually a, a, one of the chiefs in the, from our past history. And uh, we're, we're, the, we're Beaver Nation, Tach Aina Dene, and uh, we're part of the Dene in uh, Northeast BC. Um, you know, we're very proud of our culture, and we're very proud, and we share our information. The key to racism is providing knowledge, and racism is, is ignorance. People don't know, so they don't, what you don't know, you're up against. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's very important for us to, you know, bal bal balance everything out, and uh, we're all here together, so let's make it work. Thank you. Um, so we were asked to talk about um, partnerships and um, there are many facets to this, I think, for, for any First Nation that's trying to find a good way forward. So we'll spend some time talking about that. I, I know a lot of people are very interested in how things look in a post-Yahi decision world. Um, Doig River First Nation and Blueberry River First Nation were at 1.1 band. Um, so there, there's a lot of um, a lot of that decision also applies to the other Treaty Eight nations. There's a lot of work going on right now, especially with government um, on the way forward in, in many capacities, um, decision making, fiscal relationship, um, how, how decisions are going to be made going forward. Um, this, this really is the result of a long history of a lot of disturbance um, to the land and waters. And I think what a lot of people don't fully understand is that the health of the land is reflected in the health of the people. And so Doig has made it very clear that those two are connected very strongly and that any path forward needs to involve the health of the people and part of that rests on some of the partnerships that have been built and that will be built going forward. So I guess maybe what I'd like to put to you, Chief, if you'd like to start, is looking at where you are now, what are some things that industry and government need to know about working in your territory? I think the, the biggest thing is uh, relationships, building our relationships. I mean, those relationships. And uh, pre-engagement is, uh, is a key. Come be a part of the community. If you have something that needs to be, you know, applied for for a permit or whatever it is, this is to the industry and government as well. Um, come and engage with the community. Come and talk to us before you put it in for, for that process and see what the challenges are gonna be. Um, you know, the, we're, we're always there for that conversation and uh, be frank, be straight up. Um, don't, uh, don't tell any untruthful things to us and uh, you know, we're always truthful. First Nation people always put their best foot forward and uh, you know, we want a good outcome as well. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of our nation members are in the industries and uh, we don't want to hold them up, but we do need to make sure there's land protection and our treaty rights are protected. We are within treaty number eight, and uh, within that treaty, it, it encompasses all that live within our, our territory, non-Indigenous, Indigenous. If you're in that territory, you are a treaty person, and there's a treaty between us and the government and you. So we have to find that balance, and uh, it's for all of our future generations, because most people live there, and they're gonna be there. We were there in the beginning, and we'll be there in the end. So we need something to sustain the way of life that we've always had. Thank you. Um, also thinking about um, the balance among um, different values. Maybe, Kevin, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the vision of, of Ujo and what the relationship with industry particularly has been. And I think even looking ahead at some of the restoration work that's gonna be done, um, how does Ujo fit into this broader community objective? 
Thank you. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> I think it's, uh, it, it all starts with what the chief mentioned, it's uh, developing the relationships. Before you can have a partnership, you need to develop a relationship, and that's based on open conversations, truth, honesty, transparency, and that creates the opportunity to develop those relationships where you can get agreements in place so that you can work together, so that we can have member-owned companies work, our Ujo uh, contracting division work, our partners work, uh, all as part of that process in uh, the reclamation and remediation uh, work that's going to be undergoing for the f for the next uh, probably few decades. Uh, there's there's a lot of work to be done out there. We've all seen the damage that's uh, taken place to the environment and uh, damage to water systems. We know that clean water is important to all First Nation communities, and it really starts with developing those relationships. Um, when you're invited out to the community, and I've heard many, many, uh, many uh, leaders and chiefs uh, talk about this during the past two days, is industry sometimes shows up and has a preconceived notion of how they can provide solutions and provide direction on how they can help without fully understanding what the needs of the community are. Come to the community, speak with the chief and council, speak with the elders, speak with the community members and really know your audience and who you're dealing with and I think when you create those opportunities you build trust and it's through trust that we're going to move forward together. The chief said it best, you know, we're, we're going to create a better opportunity for everyone if we work together. Thank you. Um, maybe let's, let's continue on with this and can you talk about some of the businesses and some of the partnerships that you've been involved in and, and some of the success factors that you've found so far? Well, uh, we, we're, uh, Ujo Developments uh, came about in 2019, but the legwork uh, happened well before I came, became involved in 2019. And they wanted to create opportunities for the community where, where they could provide opportunity for member-owned businesses, uh, for Ujo Contracting, which is an entity uh, wholly owned by the community as well as the development side. And what we've done is create partnerships uh, and relationships with industry and our partners so that we can create opportunities to provide opportunity for growth uh, within the community as well as uh, the community uh, member-owned businesses and uh, our job is to really promote that opportunity and everyone knows anybody who's had operational experience you have to be able to move at the speed of business but before we can move at the speed of business we have to develop those relationships develop that trust uh, so that we can move forward once you have that trust then, uh, then we're able to move forward more quickly. Thank you. Um, kind of on the same topic, Chief, maybe you can talk about some of the other partnerships that you have um, in the region. You've worked very closely with the City of Fort St. John and the Peace River Regional District, um, and some of that has produced some pretty tangible results um, working together in partnership with them. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're actually, I, I love talking about this stuff, so hopefully I don't go too far, too, too long. Um, we do, we are very, very, uh, I guess, intertwined with the municipalities within our, within our region, our regional district. And uh, we do have a very good relationship. Like I said, it's all about relationships. And uh, Doig River has really worked hard on building those relationships Whenever there's events or anything that happens within our territory, we're there, we open it, and we're involved. And any time the, the you know, organization needs help, we're there. And um, it, it's our territory, so you know, if you, you, wanna, you wanna be part of everything that's uh, happening, so you have a, you have a say in what, how it goes. Uh, City of Fort St. John, we developed a relationship. We signed an MOU back in 2009, and uh, 
we purchased some property within the, the city of Fort St. John. And we sat on that, and I remember back, it was uh, 2004, actually, Gary Oker's here in the crowd somewhere. He was a, a chief at that time, and I was a counselor. And uh, we went to our, tr our trust and said we need to look at uh, economic opportunities in real estate, and we, pick up, we purchased a six-acre industrial lot. <laughs> And it was, at that time, it was 480000 And uh, it was like, uh, it was a shocker. Everybody was like, oh, no, what if we lose that money? And, and uh, you know, we did have some, some pretty, good, pretty good foresight on uh, what was going to happen within Fort St. John and, and where the industries were going. So, and that was basically, it was about 75000 an acre at that time. Forward, go forward up to 2015, we bought some more land anticipating we were going to do an ATR process. And uh, when we purchased it in 2015, it was almost a million dollars an acre. So that first six acres uh, went up about 200 and some percent or something like that. And, uh, you know, that for, for the nation to see what happened with the first piece, it was a no-brainer to pick up some more. And uh, you never lose on land. But it was part... Partly the relationship building with the city of Fort St. John. We redid another MOU in 2015, or 16, sorry. I think it was 16. I can't remember. Too many, too many things happened within that. And uh, we started through the ATR process. And uh, within BC, our reserve was the very first it, through the ATR process urban reserve. And um, we're, we're very excited about that. We actually own three parcels, and uh, they're all Gataquan, one, two, and three. And uh, our first development is the Nachi Commons. It's a eight eight acre parcel, and uh, we're planning on doing a gas station and some retail and some businesses. We've been approached by some of the industry to, you know, host host their headquarters there, and uh, it's uh, very exciting for us that you know industry sees the potential in partnerships, and they want to build those long-term relationships with us. Um, it's, it's amazing when you go to a regional district and all the mayors and all the, the board members are there, and the apprehension you kind of get and that feeling, because they, they don't know, it's unknown, and they are afraid to, to reach out and say, you know, can we come out to the community and visit? I don't know what that barrier, like how that barrier started, but there is a barrier where they're afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out to First Nation communities. We are welcoming, and we're always, you know, very friendly. It's, um, it's when you do something to us that, you know, that's deliberate and, uh, and you didn't talk to us about it and you know it in your heart it's not right. So make sure it's right when you come to our communities and uh, build those relationships. Before you do business, know our core values, know where our communities are coming from, and our culture. Thank you. Um, maybe let, let's talk about um, the internal relationships. One, one of the things that I've witnessed with DOIG is that the community is very engaged and provides a lot of direction um, to leadership and to outside parties on the right way to go, like how to strike the right balance among things. Can you describe a little bit about what some of those internal processes look like? Community engagement is huge, especially from leadership. Your direction comes from your shareholders, are, for, for me, it's my band members. And, um, you know, having a safe space for them to, to voice their, what their true thoughts are. And one of the ways that we've done it within our community is uh, we call it the clickers. And uh, it's, uh, it's a voting system. Everybody gets a clicker, one to five. And then we put up the questions that we're asking and the answers, one to five and nobody knows what the next guy is voting. So there's no peer pressure or anything like that. And that's how we get a true answer to one of our questions, whatever we're questions are asking. And uh, we're, we've been working with One Feather too as well, 
It's another platform um, for voting online because we have a lot of ro members that uh, live off reserve, and uh, it's 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 a it's it's opened up a lot of doors, and we get a true answer. We don't get an answer because everybody else put up their hand and said yes. We get an answer from from that person specifically, and it's you know it, it's it's there. That's what it is. So that's that provides a direction of where, where we're going, and you can never move ahead without your people or without your shareholders. You have to bring them along with you, and and the information is key. The biggest the biggest thing is the information. Um, in the oil and gas industry, with North, within Northeast BC, there is going to be a requirement to do pre-engagement. And pre-engagement is come, come and learn about the community you're working with. That's, all it, that's basically what it is. And then you can show what you're, what you're doing, and you'll get a true answer from the, from the nation if, uh, if you're going to have what hurdles are going to be coming, um, especially with the location on the land, because we're uh, very connected to our land, and uh, there are specific areas that you know, we, we want to protect for future generations. Like I said, not only our generation, but the next. Thank you. Kevin, can you talk about that a little bit, you know, with your sort of Ujo hat on? Um, because you also are very engaged with the community on, on business-related opportunities. Yep, absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, it's very important. Uh, the communication with industry is important. The communication with the municipalities is important. But it's also important to have communication with your shareholders. The difference between, and, and I come from industry, uh, I've, you know, watched the TSX and the New York Stock Exchange with, with uh, you know, worry and all these things. The difference in working with First Nation communities is you see your shareholders every day and, and how, how much a difference you can make in their daily lives by providing the opportunities that an ECDEV Corp or a, or a, uh, a civil engineering or a civil works group like uh, Ujo Contracting can provide. We have a very open communication with chief and council. We meet, meet uh, a few times a year. We have a shareholders meetings to discuss the state of the business. We also do that with the community. We, we come together, we enjoy a meal, we bring, we bring lunch, and we talk about the state of Ujo and what's happening. We uh, provide a little bit of swag, which is very popular, and we're very well received uh, in the community as Ujo, and we really feel like we're part of the family that, that uh, elders come up and chat with our, with our team all the time. We're a very small group, everybody knows each other, our VP of Business Development, Wayne Roethlisberger, he's an outstanding uh, business development uh, person, and he's a member of the community, and our general manager of Ujo Contracting is uh, Carl Puskupi, he's also a member of the community, and uh, it's just a very open atmosphere, and we want to kind of create that environment of openness with industry and our partners as well, because it's, it's, it's truly beneficial to everybody. I'd like to I'd like to add a little bit of that to that uh, we we had some some quite a few struggles within owning bad businesses in the past and there was always that conflict between politics and business so when we when we developed uh, our our corporation we wanted to separate that and uh, so we, we we separated it from the band it's its own entity. It's got its own board and uh, board of directors. I sit on as a, as a non-voting, just an advisory uh, seat. And uh, basically, it's a gut check. I'm the gut check for uh, is this does this line with the values of the nation? Is this the right right direction we're going? And uh, I think it's um, it's helped out our nation quite a bit. And that was one of the things that we've seen in the past is, uh, you know, leadership, micromanaging your business, and it's, uh, it, just, it just doesn't work. So we separated that, and they're on their, they're on their side, and then we're, on our side, we have the land shop and, and land protection and treaty right protection. So all that gets taken care of first, then it goes over to economics. Um, 
and that's that you know that's that's one thing that's worked for us i don't know if that works for every nation but uh and that came from the people so i think that's we got support for that that's why it works get the support and make sure you're in the right go in the right direction thank you um I do want to also ask you just to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that you've earned recognition for. And I don't, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I think one of the things that's really important is that in addition to your visionary leadership, um, you also have a very practical kind of approach to things and as a result of that in the area of finance where STAR holds a portfolio and, and has experience um, in how you're managing your operations, you've won some awards and I wonder if you can maybe just talk a little bit about what some of those things are that you've been recognized for. Uh, I guess in 2017, we were recognized for uh, community excellence in governance. And uh, that's, you know, that's something we needed good governance. We needed to change a few things and uh, within our community. And uh, it was here, it was here, I think it was in the east, east, east side of this building. We uh, accepted our award and it was uh, MNP, it was MP, MNP um, function. And uh, I remember at that time, we, uh, like I started in 2015, and, and our, our nation was actually, uh, wasn't doing very well. And things weren't, weren't uh, happening, and the, the members were very upset about that. And uh, they said, we need change. So there's a lot of social issues and social programs that weren't running properly. Like I, the first thing I seen is we had no money, no money to make change. So we had to go into the, you know, let's make some money and then we'll, we'll make a plan once we got some money to, to actually do something. And I think that's where, uh, you know, where we were recognized for, you know, providing good governance and, and we worked at, at it on our way up. Um, there's been quite a few different, different awards I can, I, there's so been so many lately that I can't remember which ones are focused, which ones. Um, it's a good place to be. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a good place to be. And I, the 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 thing that makes our nation shine is our council hustles hard. We all have different portfolios. We all work together, and um, I think you know getting your financial house in order is is one of the biggest things. Uh, we're FMB certified. And uh, we actually had a, had a really good uh, couple days here in Vancouver. We made some connections with uh, other nations that are F&B certified. And uh, we're talking about doing some you know, pretty incredible things in the future together. And uh, you know, being straight up and working hard, good, ethic, good, good work ethics is where you're, uh, where you're gonna, gonna be. In, and especially with the team building, build your team. You're only as good as your people. And, um, you know, Star's mostly here for moral support. <laughs> she says to me, she says, you better not put me on the spot. <laughs> but, yeah, we have a great team at Doig, and we're very proud, and our nation is very proud. We're, um, you know, we're working towards that, and, and anybody can do it. Any nation can, can make it. You just got to, you got to try. That's the biggest thing. Make the effort. That's great. Um, so I think our time is almost up. Any of you have anything else you want to sort of leave people with the takeaway? Yeah, I could, uh, I could mention a few things. I, I think it's important uh, when, when you're working with industry, when you're working with government, uh, be honest, create opportunities for the community. Uh, some of the things that we've been able to do too is, is create equity opportunities. Where we uh, where we buy into uh, partners and well-run businesses, Bailey Hel Helicopters would be a good example of that, as well as uh, Green Energy uh, Fraction Energy Services as well. So we're creating a space where we can become owners in in uh, in these disciplines. 
Uh, it's always important to create opportunities to improve your skill set and be diverse in the different things that you do. Sometimes you get a little bit of tunnel vision when you work in oil and gas that that's what you really want to focus in, focus on. And we've been able to, um, through again, through uh, a lot of the hard work from Wayne on our, our business development side is create opportunities for investment and reinvestment, uh, growing the companies that we have and creating opportunities to develop new companies. So I think if you keep that in mind and, and stay focused on what's important in developing opportunities for the community and, and seeing the positive things that, that can come through that, uh, we'll all be better off. Thank you. Um, is this thing on? Yeah, I would just like to echo like what the chief said pretty much like when you ever want to come to do business and build partnerships, come to the community, meet the people, and just connect with them and you'll get to understand like where they're coming from. Also, don't show up without lunch because <laughs> you can't ever do that because that's a big no-no. <laughs> and yeah, just engage with them and just be honest, open, transparent, and you'll get further ahead when you do that. That's great. Um, I don't think I thank the, uh, the host communities and the elders. Thank you for inviting us here to your lands and uh, presenting. Um, thank you very much, Chief Ian. He's sitting here somewhere. Um, and the organizers, it was a pleasure. And uh, Doiger well, First Nation is uh, proud to be a nation on the move and be a part of these kind of organizations. Thank you.